We're joined on the line by Spanish football journalist Graham Hunter. Good morning, Graham. How are you keeping, Graham? Yeah. Are we could champion football like that? Is that a serious question? <laughs> well, it's great to talk to a, a fellow Paul Weller nut. Um, I'm delighted to get you on the line here this morning. But, Let's uh, stay on the mud, Father. Let's yeah. forget football and stay on the mud, Father. <laughs> well, listen, I want to talk to you about uh, a man who might be called the godfather of Spanish football in many years to come, uh, Pep Guardiola. Uh, Graham, he's three attempts now at getting Manchester City into a semi-final and he's failed. What's going on? Big question. <laughs> uh, first and foremost... Um, the beauty of football is that irrespective of what competition we're talking about, irrespective of VAR, this competition has always held a horseshoe in its in its punching glove. Um, if it's not your night, you can lose in the most outrageous of ways. And that, I guess, would include the fact that as, as devastatingly cool as Liverpool's performance in the first leg last season was, City had um, a goal robbed from them last year that should have stood. It wasn't VAR. There is this season, and VAR has kind of turned a Nelson eye to Llorente's goal, where it definitely, however you want to interpret the laws, it bumps off his hand before his hip. There's no question about that at all. VAR didn't pick it up. Uh, VAR did absolutely correctly pick up Aguero. So we just paint that picture, even if you've said it a thousand times this morning. Because whether it's um, VAR, whether it's a, a sleepy linesman, whether it's somebody, a genius, having a brilliant performance against you, whether it's one of your own players inexplicably uh, tying his laces together, uh, you know, at my age, and I'm old, I, you see the most ridiculous things in European football, in my view, more often than in elite domestic football. Partly because it's a knockout competition, partly because... The club in front of you is one that you know less about. So going back to the last three editions of Pep Guardiola's work, I would say that last night is the oddest, the most extreme, and the one where you can bluntly say, as a, as a dead-faced, Easter Island-faced, but he company did last night, well, if we scored the penalty in the first leg, and he was right. But is, is that enough of what you're asking for is that i mean i don't know how many off the ball fans are are city stalwarts and have been for decades but if if anybody is saying well pep isn't as big as his reputation why didn't the manager win it i i have always believed that unless you can actively pinpoint an outright outrageous decision not to start somebody a poor substitution outrageously bad tactics it's obviously the players. It's obviously the players. I'll also say that from the beginning of this season, when I've been asked to tip, and please, those of you at home, <laughs> don't put money on my actual tips. <laughs> but when I've been asked to tip, I've said consistently, I don't think that City, particularly in how aggressively they defend without the ball, are hardcore enough yet to win the Champions League. Throughout this season, Pep has emphasised, and brothers it isn't the fans that they lost this via but he's saying this isn't yet a club this isn't a fan base this isn't yet a half of the city where it, you're demanded every day to win the champions league and he's been saying that's necessary and i agree with them i think that's a message that in years to come city fans will say we changed our attitude guardiola said you have to be obsessed with winning the champions league we are now and that will be to their benefit last night if you go back to last night how would you explain it a outrageously bad defending by City, which was only taught by the outrageously bad defending by Trippier. I, I, I you know, it was, if you only want entertainment, if you only want a, a Hearns Hagler slugfest, it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you, want to, you want to sit down on the computer or a chalkboard and point out how many times you can do football badly. It was also quite a good example at, at the City Ground last night. And I know last night's game was absolutely bonkers. Should we not be looking, though, at the first leg? Was he too conservative with his approach? And should he have played Kevin De Bruyne? Yeah. Unless, I mean, it's all right for us on the outside to say to play De Bruyne and just leave it at that. De Bruyne is somebody who has struggled physically, who has needed to be in the right shape to impose himself. 
and City still have a title to win. And I, I, I'm not saying this only retrospectively. It's been clear all season that for players and staff, winning the title is the priority, and, and they still may. Um, what was that in his mind? I, I don't know. Kevin De Bruyne looked retrospectively, given how he's played since last week in London, that he should have played more. Maybe he should have started. But rather than that, if you're looking at, again, I don't want to be defensive of Pep. In fact, I'm not being defensive of Pep. But if you look at that side that they played uh, last week um, at, at Tottenham's new stadium, conservative. If you take, what was the front? Well, let's say there was David Silva, there was Sterling, there was Mares, there was Aguero. Um, the only thing that he's now been called conservative for was that he paired what Fernandinho and Gundogan in the centre of defence. There was a time during your career and mine that a man playing a formation like that, 4-3-3, with players like that, or, or call it 4 2 3 one if you wish, with players like that in an away Champions League quarterfinal would have been called suicidally attacking. OK, we've got used to Pep not playing two organising midfielders, I take your point. Did he lose it because of the formation or did he lose it from the first leg because of the missed penalty? Were there other chances when City could have put um, Spurs away, particularly once Kane was off? And you knew exactly that if you policed Sun brilliantly, pretty much Spurs weren't going to fail, weren't going to score. So I don't wholly buy formation only. I'm, I, I've lived through recent times and longer ago when playing those players in that formation away to your rivals in the Champions League quarterfinal, literally would have been called, you know, kamikaze with, with attacking intent. So I, I still think that, number one, defend better at home. The way in which Sun's first two goals, well, the first two goals for Spurs were conceded last night was atrocious. And, and they lie, if you want my honest opinion, they lie at the heart of what I'm still not convinced by City about, that when you... When you can eradicate mistakes when you're being attacked, how to win the ball, where to win the ball, how regularly to, to, to do that cleanly and without any glimpse of a chance to the opponents. That's their one pending assignment under Pep. So, Graham, he has had a couple of attempts now. Can you tell me, you know, how many more attempts is he going to have with Manchester City to try and win this trophy that they so badly want? You know, because I look, I think in retrospect, when, when we look back in many years to come, I think people will look at Pep Guardiola's career and they'll say, look, he didn't make, maybe didn't win the Champions League with Bayern Munich if he hasn't done it with Manchester City, but he's still winning league titles. And to me, they are the, the toughest trophies to win. Champions League is a knockout competition. It can go anyway. But who dictates as to whether or how many more chances he has with Manchester City to win this trophy that they crave so much. Is it the, the owners from Abu Dhabi or is it Pep himself? How many times will he keep going at it? Um, Organisationally, there is a satisfaction with him. There is a degree of... Um, how, how best to say this? Not all for one, one for all, from the, from the owners through the first management layer to Pep, but it's a a concordat in that it's it's not wholly hierarchical. There is definitely um, a jigsaw puzzle of intention and understanding and belief that will not be broken by this elimination. So there will not be a pressure on him, um, the sound of a clock ticking um, now because of last night from the owners or from the management layer, which is Ferran Soriano and Chiqui Biggers, line above him. There won't. But I heard your question. Um, Partly you were asking, might, he is, I can tell you, and I'm not talking about inside sources, but I know from from certain information that I'm given from people around him, he's very, very, very tired right now, exhausted. There has been a toll on him for the consistent pressure, from the high pressure level he's working at, but I am talking above anything else, the pressure he puts himself yeah. under. And yeah, there might come a time ahead of when he's set his wish to move on, which is about three years' time, there might come a time when the cost is too high. Right now, I don't think it's that. Right now, if you're asking, does he stay? Are we going to feature, see a shock like Zidane or Cantona, or even Real Madrid or Real, leaving United when Pep says, sorry, everybody, I've just had enough. I don't think that's coming now, no. 
but I think your question is shrewd and I understand it. And were this pattern to repeat or were the title to slip away, then small thoughts in his head about how much this is costing him personally might uh, might rise. But I, I really would be surprised if we're back on in June and you're saying, yeah. see, I hinted to you that you might walk away. Then, I'm, then I'll admit that I was that I was wrong now, but I'd be very surprised, very surprised indeed. Graham, thanks very much for joining us this morning. I hope you get to where you're going to pretty quick, but we'll hopefully chat to you again soon on Off The Ball AM. Thank you. I am where I should be. <laughs>